how do you bridge the analytics into um, execution on chain execution real time and at the same time manage uh, risk vectors like uh, mev for example I, I think mev is a separate topic than the other one and it has its <laughs> You go for days about MEV. Um, I'm probably not the deepest there, but it's it's a real operating risk and concern, and you need to be able to understand what was in the pending pool on Ethereum, or or, or and then all of the it becomes incredibly more complicated with all of the the private uh, networks now because you don't have that transparency that you would hope. Um, and with all the different participants, it should it should balance you know incentives and what have you. I don't know yet. Um, it's TBD because it's really difficult to actually see what's going on in somebody else's sandbox, right? It's not completely transparent. But from the risk perspective, I want to talk about the risk, the opportunity, the actors, the actions. That actually is really interesting. So today, if you want to trade. You want to buy a call option on, you know, whatever, pick your favorite token. Um, and you can um, pick something major. Like if you want to buy a call option on ETH, okay, you can do that in CME. You can do that. Well, let's do Bitcoin because you can't do, you know, uh, ETH on NASDAQ. But so if you want to do a, a Bitcoin call option, okay, well, you can do that in CME today. You can do that on IBIT, to, you know, on NASDAQ today. You can do that on Darabit. Binance, BitGet, you know, like a long list of, of cent centralized exchanges. Similarly, there's DeFi protocols that allow you today to buy, sell, and even create spreads in DeFi protocols. Um, so therefore, what is the implied volatility for that asset? Or, you know, depends on which venue, depends on what time of the day, depends. So you start to get different... Um, you know, different vol surfaces, different implied volatilities, different incentives, whether it's a centralized versus a decentralized trading venue, what's the funding rate? What is the, you know, if somebody has a less liquid DeFi protocol where they're bootstrapping, you know, we provide SVI fitted services for altcoins. So people, whether it be an OTC protocol or, or a protocol like Derived, where they're actually, you know, using that to, to price their option markets. But those are all related. You actually have to understand if you're, you know, if you're a tr tradfi institutional trader and you're only trading on CME, well, guess what? That's the tail. That's not the dog. Darabit's the dog. So you know, even if you think I'm a, a tradfi player and I only care about what's happening on CME, you need to be aware that if there's liquidations on Darabit, those are coming your way right now, <laughs> right? And you know, similarly, you can say, well. I'm on, I'm a I'm a tradfi guy and I only or girl and I only care about you know BTC options on CME and you're like well wait a second you know I don't know what the exact percentage more than 50% of all you know crypto that's traded is not quoted in US dollars it's quoted in a stable coin oh well what does that mean well that means that the the actual you have a secondary risk there where if you have a depegging of a stable coin, that's going to happen on Binance. That's going to happen on Coinbase. That's going to happen on Kraken, Gemini, you know, go all the big exchanges. That's going to propagate to the DeFi lending pools, which is going to cause liquidations. And you're going to have a cascading effect that ultimately is going to come back and hit CME. But People need to understand, you really un need to understand what are the pockets, what is the liquidity, what is the flow, what are the flows, what are the incentives, because you have a fragmentation. It's not like I'm trading in, you know, NASDAQ's database and with a virtualized ticker symbol, even though that's what, you know, the old world order is, it's I'm actually trading on a global market that has, it's more like FX than it is like equities. Right, because now I have currency pairs, I have liquidity pockets, I and they're all related. So once you start to get into the derivative space, and now you have an amplification effect of nuance behavior, you know, you can people will be like, well, you know, hey, I want to trade the perpetual futures contract on on Binance or you know on, on uh, you know uh, Bitmex, right? And you're like, well, what are the lending rates? Well. 
you know, is the market in contango or is it in backwardation? And did it just flip? Is that is that local or is that global? Is you know, is the front month back bar month yield across those the duration in the yield curve? Is there is it really or is it just a local problem because a liquidity on a particular exchange in the order book is tilted one way or the other, and the exchange is adjusting their lending and borrowing rates, which shows up in there in the perpetual futures contract. You know, there's like mm. it's amazing. There's never in the history of financial services been such information and data and analytics and insights of what are the underlying economics available, mm -hmm. but it's overwhelming, right? So you really need to understand it, but there's tremendous opportunities for, for everybody because of that.